So the example I use for patients is that the lipoprotein is a tennis ball. The cholesterol is going inside, the triglycerides go inside, vitamins like A, D, E, and K, and different phospholipids, which are building blocks for cell, all go inside these little tennis balls. But on the outside of the tennis ball, that white stripe, that's essentially ApoB. It's a structural protein, holds that thing together in a sphere, and then acts like a little key to bind into different LDL receptors. There's an ApoB on the outside of every LDL particle. There's an ApoB on the outside of LPLA, VLDL, ILDL. So LPA is very similar to LDL. It has an ApoB, but it has an extra protein, Apo lipoprotein A on it. And it's like a little corkscrew protein. And that protein allows it to kind of dig into that glycocalyx a little bit easier to damage it. What number would you want to see LP little a? And when would you get concerned? So it's generally better to measure this. And that this is the one challenge is that it's measured in animals or it's measured in milligrams. And you want to go for the milligrams per deciliter variant. And generally you want to see it less than 75. Everybody has LP little a, but there's a genetic control with it where about 20% of the population has higher levels than that. And it's almost linear. The higher LP little a, the more vascular risk. And it can double your risk of having a heart attack or stroke compared to having normal levels. Do you think there's any way to predict who's going to have a heart attack? Yes, but it's mostly based off plaque and vascular inflammation and low nitric oxide. You can just almost see the people who are going to be the train wrecks. Oh, gosh. 